I'm Joe Random, so I'm gonna roll on the following table. You know what, it just occurred to me that I didn't implement the match from before, and now I've forgotten what that was for. So, oh well, didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, even I make mistakes. <laughs> Well, hello and welcome back once again to Me, Myself, and I Season 2, Ironsworn. I am, as always, your intrepid Game Master, host, and player, Trevor DeVal. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, if you enjoyed the show today, please hit like and subscribe, and yada, yada, yada. When last we left Arn Kalapunki, he had just liberated the town, the settlement. Town is a very strong word for these tiny little settlements, settlements up in the Iron Lands. But he had liberated the settlement of Swordbreak, along with Dari, who was a uh, former soldier, a guard of uh, Swordbreak, they uh, deposed and killed Solana, who was a monstrous bandit who had basically taken over the, the town, and uh, Arn was able to find his sister, along with the rest of the soldiers who left with his sister to go after Solana originally, uh, in the barn, and we also discovered the nature of Arn's vow, in that he was supposed to be the next overseer of Wolfstone, his home settlement. But he was unable to deal with the responsibilities, or whatever the case was, and he fled his duties and responsibilities, leaving his sister Yorun to pick up the pieces. Unfortunately, the Scourge of the Mountain, whatever that is, and we will probably find out today, descended upon the village and wiped it out. Yorun took the rest of the villagers and fled, and basically they've been on the run ever since, sort of living from cave to cave and living off of the generosity of fellow Ironlanders. Not sure how much of that there is going around. Nonetheless, Yorin is obviously not particularly happy with uh, Arn, so he's gonna have to deal with that today with a test your bond uh, move, which we are going to get to in just a second. But before we get on with things, I do wanna say that Arn did fulfill his vow to find his sister and confront her, which garnered him two experience points. So in Iron Sworn, you can either spend three experience points to gain yourself a new asset, or spend two XP to improve an asset. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to improve the archer asset right here. I'm going to take the second aspect of the archer asset. Once per fight, when you strike or clash, you may take extra shots and suffer minus one supply. You decide before you roll. When you do, re-roll any dice. On a hit, inflict plus two harm and take plus one momentum. Due to the revelatory nature of what happened at the very end of last episode with Yorun and Arn having their Situation unfold, we know what Arn's vow is. His new vow is to hunt down the Scourge of the Mountain and get revenge for Wolfstone. Now, that vow is actually his background vow. The one I said that I was gonna wait to see what it is. Well, we've waited and we've saw what it is, so that's what it is. Now, normally you wouldn't have to roll on swear a vow with your background vow. It's just automatically assumed you've already done that. But because of the nature and the circumstances of what's going on here, we're actually gonna make that roll. So he's gonna roll plus heart, which is plus four. How's he do? Nine, that is a strong hit. You are emboldened and it is clear what you must do next. Well, it might be clear to Arn, but it's not clear to me, so we're gonna have to look into that. But in the meantime, he's gonna take plus two momentum, which brings his current momentum to six. So he is emboldened by his vow to his sister. He believes he looks in her eyes and sees that perhaps if he does fulfill this vow, he might be able to earn not only the honor that he lost by abandoning his people, but he might also be able to earn his sister's forgiveness, which I think is probably just as important to him if not more so. Now, the other thing that I think he has to do right away, and again, this is sort of plays off what happened at the end of last episode, he needs to test his bond. When your bond is tested through conflict, betrayal, or circumstance, 100% he's gonna have to do this. This is, again, a heart roll. Plus four, nine, oh, okay. That is a weak hit. Your bond is fragile, and you must prove your loyalty. Envision what they ask of you, and do it. Well, this is very interesting, because we know from last time that Yorun has a goal, and her goal is harm arrival. Sister, I must confess, I have long been away from these iron lands, and I do not know where to begin. Wolfstone itself is destroyed, but has there been any news of the Scourge of the Mountain? Which we'll find out what that is, you know, very, very, very soon. I will share what I have with you, dear brother. But first, you must do a thing for me. There is a mystic, a rival of hers, who has been plaguing my steps these past few years. I want you 
to hunt down this mystic and put an end to them. Let's find out who this mystic is, because this, uh, this is the result of the weak hit on Test Your Bond. In order for Arn to keep the bond intact, he's gonna have to do this. This is probably gonna be another little vow, right? A separate uh, quest he has to do. Who is the rival? First of all, male or female? One to three is a male. What? A male witch? Okay, I, I'd like a good Viking name. What do we got here? We've got four and 47. Oddgear. What is Oddgear's goal? I mean, he's a rival to her, but is there something specific that Oddgear wants? Because this might help us figure out how to best deal with Oddgear. 38. Restore a relationship. That's interesting. So Oddgear wants to restore a relationship. He's a rival to Yorun. Is the relationship with Yorun? Were they lovers at one point? And something went horribly wrong? And now she she's out on like lover's revenge kind of thing to get rid of him. And he he wants to get back with her. He wants to he wants her forgiveness, much as Arn does. That's very interesting. Uh, let's get an idea of that relationship. 36. Suppress 42. Suppress vengeance. I, I, I gotta say, that seems to play into this jilted lover thing. <laughs> He knows he did something to Yorin really bad and he knows that she's coming after him at some point. So his goal is to suppress her vengeance. I kind of love that. Here's the question. Does she want him dead? Is it that bad? I think Yorin isn't some horrible monster. I think it's unlikely that she wants him dead. So 76 or more, she wants him dead. Uh, no. Okay, so we know that's what's going on with him. He is actively trying to suppress her vengeance, which leads me to believe that he is trying to do something to get her back, to sort of win her back, which means I think he's fairly close. He has been tracking here. He's been, you know, I, I think he's made multiple attempts maybe to try and win her back, but she is, she's spurned him at every turn and uh, she's kind of had it. And now she sees an opportunity in Arn to, you know, deal with this situation. Okay, well, that's, that's good. That's, that's something good to go on. I think that Yorun, and Oddgear were a couple. He was part of the original group that fled the ruins of Wolfstone with Yorin. Something happened during the course of their relationship to break them apart. This is just maybe a lover's quarrel. Huh. So you're telling me that this Oddgear should be found close by as he is continuously made attempts to regain contact with you. That is true. I want you to go into the wilds, find him, and tell him in no uncertain terms that I want nothing more to do with him. Convince him using whatever methods you require. I must say, Yoro, this sounds like something you were more than capable of dealing with yourself. Are you refusing me this arm? Are you going to walk away from me again? Of course not, Yoro. I will do this for you. He holds up the knife that he just used to swear the previous vow, and he wraps his hand around the, the iron blade. I swear to you, Yorin, I will find this odd gear and one way or another convince him to stop seeking you. That's a new vow. I'm gonna write that down. I don't think this is gonna be a particularly difficult vow, because, you know, he's close by. Challenge rank. 14. Troublesome. So the guy's very close by. <laughs> a challenging quest with a small number of obstacles. Great. If you make this vow to a person or community with whom you share a bond, which he does, add plus one. So he's actually rolling plus five. He swears the vow. Oh yeah, look at that. You can't do better than that. 10, and it is a match, which means it's a strong hit with a match, which is great. Strong hit. You are emboldened. It is clear what you must do. Take plus two momentum. So his momentum goes up to eight, which is great. The last time we saw Oddgear, he was making his camp near a small waterfall in the hills, not far from where we battled Solana. That is only about two days from here. I can give you the directions. And she does, and so he knows exactly where that is. So again, strong hit on the uh, uh, swear the vow. I don't think he has to make the journey roll. I will return to you soon, Yoru. And one way or another, this odd gear will plague you no more. So before we get into him going off uh, into the wilderness to track down this dude, uh, odd gear. Some of the parents of the children who were being kept hostage come up to Arn and they, you know, they, they clasp arms with him and they, they, you know, say, thank you so much, my friend. You've saved our children. You've saved our town. Let's forge the bond with Swordbreak and see if he can 
add that bond. You roll plus heart, which is great. Now, if it says if you make this move after you successfully fulfill your vow to their benefit, you may reroll any dice. He did not. The vow that he fulfilled while liberating Swordbreak had nothing to do with Swordbreak. The vow that he fulfilled was finding Yorun and confronting her. So he's not going to get that benefit of being able to reroll these dice. Here we go, plus four, seven. Oh, look at this, another strong hit. The winds of luck are changing. Make note of the bond, mark a tick on your bond progress chart. That's great. Now I also have an extra bond for my background that I have not yet taken. We have to keep that in mind. I'm gonna take the plus one spirit. So his spirit goes up to four, which makes sense because forging the bond with sword break also includes Dari. And I think that he goes with some of the town elders and he goes to see the wounded Dari in the longhouse. Thanks to you, we have managed to get back our home. I am in your debt, Arn Kalapunki. If there is anything I can do for you in the future, you have only to ask. And he winces with the pain. For now, Dari, all I need of you is to rest and to recover. He grabs his gear and he sets off in the direction of the small waterfall in the hills nearby. No need for a travel roll because he knows exactly where to go. Two days pass. I think that what he does need to do is as he gets closer to the waterfall and he can, you know, he's made his way through the woods for the past day or two. I think as he gets closer, he needs to scout the area and see if in fact there is any evidence of Odd Gear's presence. So what that's gonna be is a gather information roll as he basically does a track and a, a scout around the area. So he is rolling plus wits to scout out the area and check at this campsite, which is located, as I said, just sort of at the very base of a small waterfall cascading down from a sheer, you know, uh, stony cliff uh, into a tiny little rivulet, uh, not even really a river, more of a stream. Uh, but he can see the remains of, uh, of what, what looks to be uh, an old campsite. Uh, is the campsite fresh? Is it, is it uh, abandoned? Who can say? The dice will say. He investigates the area. He, oh, oh, okay. So this is not so good. Uh, <laughs> he rolled a three. His momentum is at eight. But I don't want to burn it, because if I burn momentum, it resets back down to two. And I don't think this is important enough to burn the momentum. So I'm gonna take the first miss of the game. Woohoo! He rolls a miss on gather information, which means your investigation unearths a dire threat or reveals an unwelcome truth that undermines your quest. Pay the price. Okay. I'm Joe Random, so I'm gonna roll on the following table. You know what? It just occurred to me that I didn't implement the match from before. And now I've forgotten what that was for. So, oh well, didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, even I make mistakes. <laughs> so he pays the price, rolling randomly on the table. What does he roll? Pay the price, 38. The current situation worsens. Hmm. He's skulking around the camp. He hunkers down, he's tracking, he's looking for tracks. And I think that he does find tracks, but the tracks that he finds are not entirely human. <laughs> I think that he finds definite, definite evidence of Odgear having been here, but not for a day or two. Because he also sees, as the current situation has worsened, he also sees tracks of what appears to be a large, four-legged ursine creature, a bear. Which makes sense, it's part of the world, why not bears, right? And it looks like there, there might have been signs of a struggle as well. So, where is Odgear? Is there blood around the area? Ask the oracle. I'm gonna say likely. So 26 or greater is a yes. 69, absolutely there is blood. There was definitely a fight here. I think that that blood is gonna be enough to allow Arn to track it back to its source. So he follows the blood back to a shallow cave or what appears to be a shallow cave from the outside. You can't really tell unless you go inside. But he carefully sneaks his way in. He's going to very carefully try and creep in and investigate the area. Uh, this is not a gather information roll, this is a face danger roll. And this is going to be using shadow with stealth. So his shadow is three. Here we go. Face danger, oh, nine, strong hit, beautiful. Take plus one momentum and you are successful. So because he is successful on this face danger, what I think that means is he sneaks into the cave and no problem. He is not discovered by anything there. Um, if I had rolled a miss there, I think maybe the bear would have been there and maybe attacked him. But I don't think the bear is necessarily here right now. In fact, on a strong hit, I'm just gonna say no, the bear is not here. But is Odd Gear here? 51 or more is a yes, 69. Yes, he is here. 
but I think because it's not a match, if it was a match, he'd be here and, and able to be of great help uh, to Arn in some way, but he's not. So he is here. So because Odd Gear is here, I'm going to ma mark that as a milestone right now. Find Odd Gear on a troublesome quest that is three boxes. He is here, so he sees Odd Gear and he's got the description from Yoran. And he runs up and he checks him. So is he dead? You know what? I'm gonna say it's unlikely that he's dead. So 76 or greater, and he is dead. And the quest ends here. Oh, <laughs> so close. So he is alive, but he's in bad shape. He's like, he's been hit, he's been mauled, he's been dragged, uh, dragged back to the to the cave. You know, he's lost a lot of blood. Obviously, that's the blood trail that uh, uh, Arn's been following. Arn kind of looks at him, you know, he kind of shakes him uh, awake. Odgir sort of like in and out of consciousness. Uh, uh, uh. Odgir, Odgir, are you all right? Can you walk? Uh, who are you? Yeah, so I think that right away Arn's going to have to do a heal move. He's going to try and treat an injury of Amos. So he pulls out some, some you know, uh, bandages and tries to, to, to stabilize Odgir and wrap his wounds. Plus two, to stabilize Odgir and help him out. Four is a miss. Which means your aid is ineffective, pay the price. Well, the aid is ineffective not because Arn doesn't know what he's doing. Arn is an experienced character who knows how to bind a simple wound. That is not why the aid is ineffective. The aid is ineffective before, because before Arn can get the bandages secured, he hears a snuffling sound and the sound of large paws moving on the rock behind him, and then the air is pierced with a deafening roar as Arn spins around, and there is a large, angry bear. Well, according to the book here, a bear ooh, is a formidable opponent. Well, it could be the end for old Arn Kalapuki. Wouldn't that be an interesting thing? I think he has to try and drive this thing off. Oh boy, how's he gonna do that? He has to enter the fray. So he turns, and he's gonna roll facing Heart, which is plus four. We go, seven. So he's got a weak hit on this. So that means that he's going to take the initiative instead of the momentum. Well, I think he roars in challenge to the bear, you know. <laughs> Not that that's gonna do anything, but I think he's gotta pull his bow and fire. Well, he's gonna use his new archer talent once per fight. Definitely once per fight. When you strike a clash, he's striking because he has the initiative. You may take extra shots and suffer minus one supply. When you do re-roll any dice, and if he hits, plus two harm and take plus one momentum. So, he is definitely going to fire multiple shots, which reduces his supply to three. He fires a hail of arrows at the bear, roaring his defiance at the bear, trying to, you know, scare him off. <laughs> Let's see if this helps. He's rolling plus edge, plus three. Okay, okay, he doesn't have to re-roll because he got nine, he got a strong hit. That's five harm to the bear, that is brutal. So his momentum is now at plus 10. That's really high. Oh boy, well he can't do that again. He can only do that once a fight. I think this is just gonna anger the bear and he sees that, he sees the bear rear up in pain, multiple arrows sticking out of it. The, you know, the feathers buried shaft deep into its fur, into its hide. He kind of maneuvers himself between Odgir and, and the bear and he draws back for another shot. He's got to try and drive this thing off. He's not ready to do an end the fight move yet, even though he got a strong hit there. So this is going to be a straight up strike. Rolling plus edge when he's attacking at range. Plus three is okay, okay. Five, because it's plus three. Strong hit again and something good happens. So we already know what that is. A strong hit means he retains an issue plus one harm. That's gonna be three harm. Oh, the bear is just horribly wounded, and I think the twist that happens here is as Arn fires that last arrow, it sinks deep into the bear's sort of flank up here near its neck, and it roars defiance, but it also roars in fear because it knows that the stinging nettles of this little creature that's firing things at it in its own lair are too much for it, and because of the match, it turns tail and flees into the forest. Okay, so Arn, again, breathing heavily, bowstring still vibrating from the twang. <sighs> I think he goes out here and he just kinda checks to make sure that the bear has fled, but in fact, the bear is, is even now running off into the woods. Now, 
Uh, Arn can't let a, a wounded animal go off to die. That's horribly cruel. So here's what I'm gonna do. He got the strong hit. The bear is retreating. He runs to the edge of the cave. He pulls back one last arrow and he aims. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna roll to end the fight. It's gonna be a progress move. So he is rolling against uh, he, eight. He's got eight progress. That is amazing. Oh, that is so good. Progress move. Oh, <laughs> of course I rolled a 10 here. So that is a weak hit, which means he does succeed, but something else happens. And he lets fly the arrow, sails through the trees, finds its mark right in the back of the skull, and it puts the bear out of its misery. However, by doing so, an existing danger worsens. Great. So as he does so, he hears a cry from back in the cave. He turns to run back in and he sees that Oddgear, Oddgear's wounds are really bad. Oddgear having tried to get up, uh, he wound up tearing open more of his wounds and he's falling to the ground, dying in front of Arn's eyes. So Arn sees this, oh my God, he's got to deal with this situation. Also, I'm gonna mark a milestone for that because he just, um, he dealt with another thing that got in the way for, of, of his vow to uh, track down Oggear, so I'm gonna give a milestone here, uh, which is three boxes. But currently, Oggear is dying, so he has to do a heal. The situation is worsened because he got a weak hit on that move. I think what he does is, uh, so he sees Oggear uh, lying there, uh, you know, his wound is ripped open, he, he puts some pressure on the wound, but he says to him, Oggear, sit tight. There may be some herbs outside in the forest that I can grab to help staunch your wounds. And he runs out, looking along the slopes of the cave mouth, looking for any kind of herbs that might help him stop the bleeding and preserve Oddgear's life. So this is gonna be secure an advantage with expertise, insight, or observation. This could be plus wits, because he's, he's you know, doing a perception check in any other game, right? So that's gonna be plus two. Does he secure an advantage for himself? Ooh, that's pretty good. Eight, so that is a weak hit. Your advantage is short-lived. Take plus one momentum. He, he does find something to help him, but it's not enough to actually give him a bonus on the, the, the aid roll, but it is, you know, narratively speaking, it's, it's, it's gonna help. So he quickly pulls out his knife and cuts off a bunch of these herbs, runs back in to the cave where Oddgear is sitting there, ah, lying, you know, blood pouring out of his, his uh, freshly reopened wounds, and he's got to do a heal. Here we go. Plus wits or iron, they're both the same, plus two. This is really not good. Arn is not very good at this stuff. He's, you know, clumsily pulling forth his bandages, trying desperately to staunch the wounds. He shoves some of the herbs in the woods as well, trying to make things better for Oddgear. Does he manage to heal him with a six? Is going to be a miss, but here's the deal. I cannot afford to miss because otherwise Augur's probably gonna die and then the quest is uh, not fulfilled, not really. Because remember, Yorn didn't want Augur to die. I have 10 momentum at the moment, but I'm gonna burn my 10 momentum and put it back to its reset value of plus two to cancel those dice, effectively creating a strong hit. So using his renewed confidence, represented by his huge amounts of momentum, he is able to staunch the wound and heal Oddgear, preventing him from dying, which is pretty great. Rest now, Oddgear. You will be fine. Basically, Arn just kind of keeps a watch on the cave to make sure that nothing untoward happens over the next few hours as Oddgear sort of gets his rest. After many hours, I think Oddgear sort of gets to his, uh, you know, he sort of gets to his feet, but he sits against the wall and, you know, Arn comes over and gives him some water and, you know, pulls some, some food out of his pack and, you know, sort of slowly helps him uh, get back to, you know, full consciousness kind of thing. Oddgear, I am here for your room. Yorun, you, you are a bear a message from her? Yes, Odgir, and the message is this. Whatever passed between you and my sister is over. She never wants to see you again. But I only ever wished to love her, to, to be with her. Whatever love you had for my sister, you must accept that she does not return it. Nor will she ever return. Listen to me, Odge. If you know what is good for you, if you care what is good for her, you will stay away and give up this mad pursuit. Well, that is a charm, pacify kind of thing, compel, so he's gonna roll plus heart. Let's see what happens here. Six is a strong hit. Momentum is now at three. So he has compelled him 
for sure. That worked. That's a strong hit, which is going to count for a milestone in this case. He believes he's achieved this vow because he sees the light of understanding in Odgir's eyes. There's a profound sadness that crosses his face. He's about to argue with Arn, but he can see the steel in Arn's eyes, and he realizes that there'll be no arguing on this, so he kind of, you know, slumps, defeated, unfortunate. So now Arn has to do the fulfill your vow. Roll, challenge dice, and compare to your progress. Your progress on this is nine. Here we go. Strong hit, fulfill the vow. It's a troublesome quest, so he marks one experience. I will go into the wild and leave Jorun behind. That is for the best, Otkin. And with that, Arn is free to return to Swordbreak, having fulfilled the vow. He doesn't have to do a journey move to get back to Swordbreak, it's fairly close, but after a day or two, he does return to the settlement, and there he finds Jorun now set up in a longhouse. Arn, you returned. Odgir. Have you dealt with him? Odgir will not trouble you any longer, my sister. Ugh. Finally, I am free of him. The bond with Yoron is secure. He's done something for her, reestablish his bond with her. Now that I have done this for you, sister, will you tell me what I need to know to begin my quest to find the Scourge of the Mountain? Yes, brother. You have earned that, at least. Let us find out what exactly is the scourge of the mountain. There's been a lot of talk in the comments about what it might be, but I'm gonna let the dice determine. That's the way I roll. Literally, that's the way I roll. What does it have to do with 15? Raid? Well, that makes sense <laughs> so far. Raid. 97, wealth. Raid wealth. It comes down from the mountains. It wiped out a settlement. It raids wealth. Do you see where I'm going with this? <laughs> the scourge of the mountains that came down, raided the wealth of Wolfstone, whatever was there, and leveled it is a dragon. <laughs> the scourge of the mountains is a dragon and Arn must now find a way to find it, hunt it down, End it. Well, that's gonna be pretty tough. Because <laughs> it's a dragon. Surely there must be a weapon that I could use to end this creature. Perhaps I should begin looking for that. I, I think there's definitely a weapon that, a, a fabled weapon that he could find. Indeed, in my researches in the mystical arts, I have come across many references to just such a weapon. It was a weapon that I myself tried to find after you left us. I was unsuccessful, but I was able to find a clue as to its whereabouts. 16, evade, 50, possession. It was stolen, evade possession, it was stolen. It used to belong, it used to belong to Arn and Jorun's Ancestors, maybe like their grandfather, their great grandfather. Yeah, that's the reason why the Scourge of the Mountains has such a, a, a thing against the, the, the people of Wolfstone, because years ago, their great grandfather managed to wound the dragon. This has sounded a lot like the Hobbit. <laughs> managed to wound the dragon using this weapon. This dragon not only raised Wolfstone, but has been hunting the people of Wolfstone. That's why they're on the run, because the dragon is not out to destroy the town of Wolfstone. The dragon is out to destroy the bloodline of Arn's great-grandfather. Interesting. Now, I think that Yorun is smart enough and powerful enough to have evaded the dragon for many years, so I don't think the, the dragon is nowhere nearby. I think she has successfully got her people to safety because the, the quest for this is extreme. If the quest was, say, dangerous, then the dragon might be close by, but it's not. There is a weapon that belonged to their great-grandfather that was stolen by somebody and taken somewhere else. So what was Arn's great-grandfather's name? We need a good name for him. Vesledi. Vesledi Kalapunki. So what is the weapon? Was it a spear? I think it's likely it was a spear. So 26 or more, it was a spear. It was a spear. The weapon, of course, had a name. What's a cool sounding? Oh, I've got an idea. I'm gonna put it out to you guys. I'd love to hear your ideas 
in the comments below about what you think the name of Veslidi's spear is, the, the spear that wounded the scourge of the North all those years ago and secured its enmity forevermore to the people of Wollstone. Put your ideas in the comments below. I'd, I'd, I'd love to see them, and if I like one of them, I'll definitely use it. But in the meantime, we know that Veslidi had this spear, whatever it's going to be called, and it was stolen from his barrow by somebody. And that is the information that Yorun knows. When Arn left, she knew that Veslidi's spear could actually hurt the creature. She went to his barrow and she entered the barrow and she saw that the spear had already been stolen. And she was able to uh, ultimately find that the spear was in the possession or was located or was rumored to be somewhere, somewhere. So she has that bit of information. She knows that it was stolen by somebody. She's, she's got a name. 97. Ursia. What was Ursia? Ursia was a forester. Okay, Ursia the forester. Why did Ursia steal the spear from the barrow of Veslidi? 27. Kirin Ill. So she stole the spear of Veslidi because she believed it had mystical powers to cure an ill, to heal someone close to her, probably. Ursia the forester, as far as Yorun knows, is located in she was last seen at a battlefield. She's known to reside on the edge of an ancient battlefield. Where is the battlefield? We're rolling on the region here, and it's going to be the Barrier Islands. Okay, so she's not that far off. And what do we know about this battlefield? It is 62, ruined, a ruined battlefield. A ruined battlefield tells me that it was a site of a particular, particularly ruinous battle. So something really, like a huge, awful, awful battle took place on one of these islands where Ursia the Forester has fled to after stealing this spear. Now this was many years ago, so is she still there? We certainly hope so, but there's only one way to find out. Play to find out. So Arn's first step in this vow is going to have to be to find a way to the Barrier Islands to track down Ursia the Forester on the edge of this ancient ruinous battlefield and see if she still possesses the spear whose name you will give me. And if she does, to reclaim it from her and thereby have the weapon of his ancestors with which he can destroy once and for all, the scourge of the mountains, providing he can actually find it. Thank you so much for joining me, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe, and uh, we will see you next time on Me, Myself, and Die.